And now, Your Home's Foundation with Ruth Fry. Hello, and welcome to Your Home's Foundation. I'm Ruth Fry, and today I have with me engineer and soil specialist Gary Sider and foundation marketing specialist Christy Johnson. So we've all noticed that in the, the news lately, there's been lots and lots of articles and stories about homes and, founda and foundations or soil conditions. You've got houses falling down hills and sinkholes in California. You've got the droughts in the Midwest and you have more sinkholes in Florida. Mm -hmm. What are the first symptoms that people might see, Christy? The initial symptoms are stair step cracks in your exterior brick walls, uh, bowing found in the, your basement walls. They may bow or start to crack. Also in your drywall and maybe sticking windows and doors are the initial signs. Um, but now would sticking windows and doors, I mean, I've got doors that stick when it rains and stuff like that, so that's not always a symptom, right? Right. Yeah, you, it depends a lot on the, on the existing conditions. In the Midwest, um, when in the summers, we have that wonderful thing called humidity, and wood absorbs moisture from the air, and so they can actually swell a little bit, and so you can get some sticking in that time of the year, and that's obviously not a problem. Um, and there are certain kinds of cracks that are problems and others that are not. Uh, there's what we call structural or non-structural cracks, and the ones that usually aren't a problem are hairline cracks that don't go anywhere or don't get any worse. The ones that are a problem, of course, is as what Christy mentioned, the exterior um, brick fascia, cracks in the brick fascia, uh, around lintels, uh, corners um, of doors and window openings, and particularly if they start to widen or if they gap differently where they're wider in one part and get narrow in another. Those are obviously problems and can happen during drought conditions. Okay, so what is the difference <clears throat> between a horizontal crack or a vertical crack? Does it matter? Does it mean one's worse than the other? Uh, it, it means different things. Uh, vertical cracks can uh, occur uh, for a number of different reasons. They are usually an indication of some type, either of, of an overload conditions, too much load, or they could be demonstrating some separation, uh, lateral movement of a building or part of the building. All right, um, just stop. You gotta go back. What do you mean by load? Uh, weight, gravity uh, of your house. The house weighs something. So the gravity loads is what would be what I'm t talking about. So you're situation. saying that the soil underneath the house is no longer strong enough to hold the load of the home. That's right. Okay. Uh, horizontal cracks are usually when something is bowing or rotating, uh, a basement wall, for example. Uh, and what would and, cause something like that? Uh, usually that will occur in a time of swelling soils, wet conditions, where by the same nature that a, a um, soil will shrink when it loses moisture, mm -hmm. it can expand um, when it's, when it's uh, wet. And we call those volume change soils. And so when the soil swells, it can actually impart a pressure on your walls, push on them, and if the wall isn't capable of resisting that, it can crack. So, I heard from another engineer that uh, because the Midwest, specifically Missouri, it has so much clay in the soil, and the clay is like Play-Doh, when you leave the Play-Doh out and it dries out, you can't pour water on it and make it reabsorb. I mean, it might a little bit, but for the most part. So what is that gonna mean for the clay soil in, in Missouri or in the Midwest with this drought? The, uh, it can take a long time for the soils to recover. Um, and in some cases, they won't necessarily fully recover to where they were. Uh, the word we use is consolidate. They can uh, actually become uh, more dense with time, uh, but they will recover, and what I mean by that is they will, they'll increase in volume a little bit, uh, in some cases a lot, depending on the types of, of clay soils. So that recovery is when moisture is reintroduced into clay. Uh, clay likes water, so it will actually, uh, we say it has an affinity for water, so it will actually pull it in, and, and, and what it does is it will swell a little bit. And so uh, when you have a, a severe drought, it takes a long time, it could take years uh, for that process to come back, if you will, or recover. Right. So if somebody chooses to get their foundation fixed now, 
and in a few years the soils come back a little bit, will it affect the fix? It can. Uh, depends on how uh, when the when the foundations are is repaired is what actually is done. Generally, when foundation repair is done, the home is supported against further settlement. And so, usually, in other words, you're keeping the house from from coming down or okay. rotating. And so, uh, usually, what the the contractors will do is, if they have to, they'll lift the structure back a little bit or stabilize it so that any future movement is not going to affect uh, the foundation. In some cases we have to use things called um, void forms in order to uh, allow soils room to move if they want to um, around your foundation. Um, and it depends on your area, your region is where that ne is needed. Like in the, in the uh, Rocky Mountain regions, a lot of that's used in the south central part of the U.S. in some cases. But, it depends a lot on the specifics of, of your area and the, and the severity of the drought. Okay, so our audience members are seeing cracks in their drywall, maybe cracks in their basement, their doors and windows are sticking even during the drought, not just during the April rains. Um, maybe their floors are uneven. What do they do? It's best to contact your local Chance Alliance Network dealer to really understand what's happening with, with your foundation. Um, it's ideal to, to call, schedule an appointment, have them come analyze your foundation and really understand what's, what's happening with, with your home. And they will advise and provide you a, a solution at, with the Chance Helical Product System or Atlas Resistance Peer System. And it, it's important, not all foundation repair companies are the same, uh, they're all different. It's important to do your research. And the Chance brand family of products has been around over 100 years and backed by a $3 billion company called Hubble Power Systems, owned by Hubble Incorporated. And I understand that Chance offers a warranty, so not, not only do the homeowners get a warranty from the installer, but they also get a warranty from the steel supplier. That is correct. Uh, when, when a Chance Lines Network installer is contracted, they provide a service and that's warranty. Hubble, the, par the parent company of the Chance brand family, provides the product warranty, which is a 30-year fully transferable warranty. So anytime the homeowner sells the home within the 30-year period from the install, they can fully transfer the warranty. And that replaces the steel? Absolutely, absolutely. So you're covered from, with the installer's warrant, the Chance Lines Network installer's warranty and the Chance product warranty. So you're fully covered and backed by a company that's over 150 years old and, and $3 billion strong. Ruth, if I might interdict, uh, part of what the foundation repair contractor, the Chance installer, will do uh, is inspect your home. Do a site investigation, see what the, the issues are, determine whether or not there is a, is a, is a foundation problem. And we call that the plan of repair. And that's important. That needs to be done so that you as a homeowner can have assurance that you've got someone who knows what they're doing, that can read, we call it kind of reading the foundation, understand what parts of the foundation need to be fixed. Maybe the entire structure needs to be repaired, uh, so you don't always know. Uh, All right. and so it's important, and, and sometimes they'll tell you, hey, don't have to do the fix. Sometimes it's, you don't have as big, big a problem as you might right. think you do. Well, thank you so much. All right, we'll, be, we'll talk about this more when we come back after these messages. More from Your Home's Foundation when we return. It's what you don't see that matters most. If you're experiencing the symptoms of a settling foundation, turn to the company that invented the foundation repair industry. Strength, integrity, trust. These are the foundations upon which we stand. With the largest network of dealers across the country, Chance is America's ground force. Welcome back to Your Home's Foundation with Ruth Fry. Hello and welcome back to Your Home's Foundation. I'm Ruth Fry and I have Gary Sider, a foundation engineer, and Christy, a foundation marketing specialist. Before the break, we were talking about how to fix your foundation. We've talked about the symptoms, the cracks, the moving walls maybe, sticking doors, 
um, uneven floors. How do you know what to do? How do you know who to call? You need to call a foundation repair specialist and it's important to know um, a couple things. What brand of a product do they use for a deep foundation to, to fix, your, fix your home? Um, do your research. Um, the Chance brand family has been around a long time. They've actually invented a system that's been tried and true, an engineered system. So it's really important to understand who you're hiring to do the work. Do they have a referral system so you can actually do your homework and go see somebody's home? Did they do a good job? Um, do they do quality work? And then the other thing is the brand. What brand of foundation solution do they offer? And is it tried and true, engineered? is really important. And is there always a one-size-fits-all solution? No, by no means. Um, there are different types of uh, foundation repair systems out there. Um, there are the helical pile systems that are manufactured by chance, the Atlas resistance pier systems also manufactured by chance. There are different types of deep foundations that do the same thing. They repair your home. They lift and stabilize your house. Okay, so as a homeowner, when Christy says, I've got to know what they're installing and I've got to do my research, as a regular homeowner, this is going to blow my mind. I mean, what, how am I going to know even where to begin and what's, who's pulling my leg and who, you know, I mean, how do I, how do I sort through that? Uh, as Christy's mentioned, I would go, you know, I'd check out your Chance certified installers. Um, you know, the Hubble Chance company, uh, we um, certify and make sure that our installers that use our products are well trained. Uh, they have to be in order to represent us. Um, that individual can come out, take a look at your home, um, do a, an inspection, uh, check it out. We call them site visits. That individual may, depending upon the nature of your foundation issues, um, ask you or request that you uh, involve a, a professional engineer, someone who uh, is very well versed in foundation repair to come in and create and develop what we call the plan of repair. And how much is that going to cost? Uh, engineers are cheap. <laughs> it depends on the situations. They will, it could be four or five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars. It depends on, on your location where you live. But that can also validate your concerns. You know, you know, do I trust this person? Do they really know? Despite going to see previous work, um, the engineer with the plan of repair can validate what your concerns are. Uh, are they telling me the truth? Do I really have a foundation issue? And the engineer would do that. They would confirm or tell you otherwise that yes or no, you have an issue. And that engineer can also serve as an inspector. If you do decide to eventually repair your home, uh, the engineers can inspect to ensure that the work is being done properly, which is required by code in, yes. in most jurisdictions. Okay. And I, I mean, I would interject with that, that with any home repair, you want to make sure that they have insurance, mm -hmm. that uh, they are who they say they are. If you need to go to your state's website and search to see if they oh. are really a business entity, if they really have a business license, if... Uh, it's my understanding that foundation repair, I know in the, in the greater Kansas City area and in uh, Johnson County, Kansas, and I believe in Lakeview, Florida, they require permits for foundation repair. And so that you need to make sure that your company is licensed and able to pull a permit. Um, Absolutely. It's also very important for how long they've been in business uh, because foundation repair is is something that is it's a skill it's an art I mean it truly is something that is developed and there are um, you know it's it's not something that you just figure out overnight uh, and so having an, a well experienced company uh, do the work is, is very important and understand their warranties as we mentioned in a previous section that your installer offers a service or installation warranty and then the manufacturer offers a 30-year fully transferable product warranty um, when you're up against a limited lifetime, it varies state by state, and they, that's not always what it, it means or you think it is. There's a lot of small print that you may not understand, and there's some fine lines that you may not be getting the warranty that you think that you are. So it's really important to understand that you're getting the best warranty, which Chance does have the best warranty in the industry. Okay, very good. So. Um, 
Well, I really want to talk about what exactly this means to my home in terms of digging it up or repairs. I don't know if we have enough time to get into that or if we want to wait till the next segment. So um, what are some of the things that people can do, just little fixes before, you know, if they think they might have a problem or what are some of the things that, that might void their warranty? Is this before or after the repairs? Well, let's done? say after the repairs, what might void their warranty? What? Well, it, with most foundation problems in residential, let's focus particularly on homes, uh, nine times out of 10 or even more than that, the reason is due to water in one way, shape or form. And so proper drainage, making sure your gutters and your downspouts are clean. Uh, it's a very good idea to drain the water away from your foundations uh, out to daylight if, you know, by burying um, tiling so that you actually divert the water out away from your foundation. Uh, proper slope uh, away from your house's foundation so that the water naturally drains away from your foundation is very important. That will ensure or make sure that, uh, that you won't be compounding the problem by letting the water pool against the side of your house, which is not a good thing. Right. Also, if you plan to have any additions to your home, it's important to perhaps bring your, your Chance Certified Installer back if you are planning to have additions, which would mean more weight on your home, or if you're planning to add on to an area where you had the product installed, it's important to make sure you bring them back into it so they can either be removed and for the future installation that they're properly, the foundation's properly it. installed. Okay, well, very good. That's all really interesting. All right, when we come back, we're gonna talk about just what this means to your home and your yard. More from Your Home's Foundation when we return. You could say we're a company that's truly down to earth. We believe in things made in America, in building a solid foundation. In fact, we didn't just lay down these ground rules, we invented them. Since 1912, we've been the industry leader in providing foundation solutions. Welcome back to Your Home's Foundation with Ruth Fry. Hello and welcome back to Your Home's Foundation. I'm Ruth Fry and with me I have engineer and soil specialist Gary Sider and marketing foundation specialist Christy Johnson. Thanks for being here guys. Thank you. You bet. So before we went to break we were talking about a couple of things. Um, one was room foundations but I also really wanted to get into what does this mean to my home and my yard when I when I do this um, so I guess we'll jump in with that so I've I've done my research I've picked a great company um, I know they're insured I get a schedule date and what happens well hopefully the weather is good the, the day they show up uh, because there will be some disruption to your you know to your daily routine if the work can be done on the outside of the of the home, uh, expect some some uh, uh, removal of landscaping, shrubs, uh, sidewalks, you know, or patios, depending upon if they're up against to your, your foundation. Uh, and then they'll be digging some holes. So you'll have some machines out there, typically uh, skid steer machines or, or, or mini excavators to dig the holes. And sometimes, depending on the location, they may hand dig. So they may either use equipment, standard equipment, or hand dig, depending on your location. And if you have a full basement or not. Uh, and they'll excavate down to the, to the foundation, uh, which can be different types. It can be a, a strip footers or footings or grade beams. They need to get down to that, to that level uh, because they'll install uh, piers, helical piers or... Okay, I have no clue what you just said. Okay. What's a footing, um, Gary? The, the, the footer is basically the, the foundation that your home was built on. It's typically a concrete strip um, that is about 18 inches wide, uh, usually 8 uh, inches, 8 to 10 inches thick. And then um, you said something else, though, like a... A grade beam? A grade beam. Grade beam is similar, except that it's, it's more of a formed uh, foundation 
Uh, it's again concrete, it's reinforced, and it's usually a, more at a shallow depth where you're not having a basement. Uh, and is that something that's pre-cast? When it's um, put in? Generally not. Usually it's cast in place uh, with forms uh, when the home is built. And it's just called, say a, that word again. A grade beam. A grade beam and it's just called that instead of a footing because it's not as deep? Yes, usually the, the footers uh, or footings are usually um, used you know, at a deeper depth, usually under basements quite often. You can use the grade beams there as well. It, it varies on your location in the country. And at that point, that's where the contractor has to get to to do the repair. He has to start at that point. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and so if I've got water issues, then can they do some of that fixing of the water situation, like drain tile and that kind of stuff? And can they fix the cracks on the outside? Yes, that, that is correct. They'll, they'll, uh, they'll sequence their work depending on, on what they have to do, if they're going to have to put in new tiling, new drain tiling. Uh, either on the ex exterior or, in some cases, on the inside. They will sequence their work, and in some cases, they have to expose more of your foundation in order to do that work. Uh, but yeah, that, that would be part of the entire plan of repair. Exactly, and that's identified in the bid or the plan of repair, as Gary mentioned. So you know up front what's first, second, and third, and they'll, they'll go through what to expect with you. Okay, and so how many days or weeks am I talking about here? Um, from start to finish, uh, it can take anywhere from a couple of days uh, to, in some larger uh, work, uh, a couple of weeks. Um, that's when you're talking about, you know, putting in 20, 30 piles, whereas uh, in a couple of days that could be, you know, five to ten uh, piles. And it depends on how much uh, work they have to do to get down to your foundation, you know, how much excavation, how much, um, we call that prep work. And as Gary mentioned, there. weather permitting, as long as the weather cooperates, it can be done much faster and as scheduled. And what about inside of the house? What do I need to be worried about, my breakables and the pictures on my walls and that kind of stuff? Uh, contractors will put down um, sheets, mats, uh, try to keep the dust down, um, take appropriate cautions about that. If your basement is finished, it's difficult because they will have to um, again, prep the site, prep the area, so that means in some cases they'll have to remove um, flooring or anything that's been finished, uh, walls, because uh, they have to get down to that, to the foundation that's below the, your floor in your basement. Okay. Right, or the basement wall, they may have to take down some of the drywall and get to the basement wall if your basement wall is bowing, either you know, with the moisture that there's pressure on it and it's cracking, so they may have to remove the wall as well. Yeah. So, this is something that if you had the choice, if you had the option, you definitely want to do before you finish your basement. And Very much so. Uh, with that thought, can you do this to a new home before it's even built? In terms of installing... Piers. I yeah. mean, would you ever need to do that? Um, the, it's possible. It, it depends a lot on your conditions. And there's a lot of people who say a lot of the good locations for building are, are gone. And so soil conditions will dictate that. If you have poor soil conditions um, where you can't build a, a concrete foundation uh, near the surface, then you need deep foundations and more specifically a helical pile system. Would my builder know that? Sometimes. Um, it's, um, if, the, if he's a good developer, he should be aware of the various uh, products that are out there. And yes, more and more are aware of using helical piles in those situations. Uh, a deep foundation, they can be, they can use different types, like a, a concrete uh, shaft. Um, and so they, there are different systems that do the same thing. Uh, helical piles, of course, we believe are, are, would be a better choice. And it is more economical if you do it up front with a new construction versus having it done later. So it is wise to understand your soil. Are you building on a fill? Are you on phase three of a subdivision where you know the dirt has been moved and excavated and you're building on the final phase of a subdivision? It's really important to know what you're building on and do the, if you need a deep foundation to have it installed before you start building your home because it could be more costly later on. Well, and that's what I was wanting to ask and I'm sure everybody wants to know, what is this gonna cost me? It's, it's not cheap. I mean, let's be frank. Um, 
it depends a lot on your region, your locations, your requirements based on codes and, and um, jurisdictional authorities. Uh, and we see it ranging considerably. Um, it can be in some cases as low as five or six hundred dollars in some parts of the United States, um, or it can be as much as twenty-five hundred dollars um, per uh, peer placement, not per, for the per, whole fix. Right per installed peer. That's correct. And and so you know what's an average twelve hundred, thirteen hundred dollars perhaps that would be. Uh, typical for a uh, an installed cost per per location per peer and a quality solution as well. Yes. Well, and I would think you would want to do it right the first time. Absolutely. You don't want to do this again. Correct. So we've talked about peers and and you've mentioned piles and what can you tell me about those? What's the difference? How am I going to know when they say a pile or a peer or an anchor? What mm -hmm. is what is that? There's helical piers or helical piles, and then there are we call that are, this is what we would use in foundation repair: helical piles or what we call resistance or push piers. They're steel. They're steel piles that are either screwed into the ground, or they're driven into the ground, and they're driven by hydraulic uh, cylinders that, that push them into the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're structural steel, uh, and they're driven deep enough so that they will then bear the load or the, of your house, your, the weight of your house. Right. Okay. And, and those are done usually every five to eight feet. And it's based on the plan of repair, either from your Chance Lines network dealer or the engineer of record that you've hired, how far apart they're spaced. Mm -hmm. Well, this was so interesting, and I think it was really informative for the homeowners to try to understand um, not only what the peers are and what it's gonna cost and what their symptoms are, um, I think there's a lot of other things we could talk about, so I hope you guys can come back again sometime. I'd be thank glad to. Thank you for having Very us. Good. You're welcome. Appreciate it. I'm Ruth Fry, and this is Your Homes Foundation, and we'll see you next time. Hubble and Chance are committed to providing information to homeowners across the country so they can make an informed decision on their home's foundation repair. For more information on Hubble and Chance products, go to MyFoundationSolutions.com.